Welcome back to my channel, beauties. For those of you who are new here, my name is Cheyenne, and every week I post beauty tutorials and reviews. This week I am starting a new series called Sinister Sundays, where I will be telling ghost or paranormal stories sent in by you, the viewers, while doing my makeup. I'm also celebrating my birthday today, so I figured I would share some personal experiences and stories that I have heard since I was growing up. First, I want to give you a little bit of background about the area that I grew up in, and that my mother actually grew up in as well. Apparently, back in the day, it was all farmland, and this farmer lost his daughter in the field. She went out and she went missing and was never seen again. And eventually they sent out a search party and no one could ever find her. She just ended up being an unsolved mystery. Supposedly all of the hauntings that happened in the area are her and her family. I was really curious about this so I did some research and tried to do a little bit of digging and honestly nothing ever came up. I'm not sure if it's a real story or just an urban legend that was passed down through the generations and people really believed it at the time during the 50s and 60s that there was this little girl haunting the entire neighborhood. The most memorable story I grew up hearing was from my grandmother. She used to tell me this all the time. She woke up, it was probably about three o'clock in the morning and she heard something that startled her in her sleep. And she went into the bathroom to use it. And as soon as she closed the door, she started hearing almost like a, a chanting, just a group of people calling out for Maria, just over and over again, Maria, Maria, Maria. And at first she was trying to place where the sound was coming from. And then she realized it was coming from the bathroom that she was standing in. And she was thinking, you know, this can't be right. And she opened the door and stepped out of the bathroom. And as soon as she stepped out of that bathroom, the chanting stopped. Later that day, she ended up going over to a neighbor's house for, I think it was a dinner date or something. And they were sitting in the living room talking. And all of a sudden there was this really bright glowing orb in the corner of the room up towards the ceiling and her neighbor's husband was like what the heck is that and went up to it and touched it and it was almost like touching ice and as soon as he touched it it ended up disappearing completely people in the neighborhood were having these very strange experiences and all of them were talking and this is how this, this story of the farmer's daughter being searched for was being spread throughout the neighborhood. Another time my grandma was cooking dinner and she was home alone and she was making spaghetti sauce and she had it on a low simmer and she realized oh I forgot I forgot a certain ingredient I need to go to the market so she had turned the stove all the way down and made sure that it was on a low simmer and like I said before she was home alone she locked all the doors closed all the windows and went two blocks down to the local market got what she needed came back maybe a five minute shopping trip and when she came back into the house and into the kitchen her spaghetti sauce had basically exploded all over the kitchen and the burner was turned all the way up and I don't know about you but it takes forever for anything to boil and I don't see how something within five minutes could have boiled over to the point of explosion like I said before, I don't really know how true the story is, but tell me in the comments down below what you think, if you think it's some poultry geist or whatever it is. Like, I want to know what, what your thoughts on this urban legend is. So this next story is my own, and this happened a couple years ago. So in D 
December 2012, my grandma passed away. And we sent her body off to be cremated. Every day for two weeks, at midnight and noon, everyone in the house would hear our front heavy wooden door slam shut. We always just assumed it was another person in the house coming in or leaving or whatever. My mom always assumed it was me coming home late. I always assumed it was my brother going out to take out the trash or do something. And this happened every day for two weeks. And one day I was in the kitchen eating lunch and my mom was upstairs in her bedroom and it was just the two of us. And it turned noon and then we both heard the wooden door slam shut. We both ran to the hallway and like looked at each other and we questioned each other like, hey, like, did dad just come home or did, what was that? And we, we opened the door and we looked at the door. There was nobody around. And the door just would do this by itself at midnight and noon every day. It finally stopped one day. And it stopped on the day that my grandma's ashes returned to the house. And it's never happened since. And that has always given me the chills just thinking about that. My dad always makes a joke that grandma was just trying to leave the house and go out for for whatever she wanted to do. I definitely believe that it was my grandma's spirit, but it's still a very eerie feeling and experience. So my last story for you guys tonight is from back in 2017. My son was probably about a year old and every night in order to get him to fall asleep, me or my husband would have to walk him back and forth through the living room and sing to him until he fell asleep. One night, he had woken up in the middle of the night and I took him downstairs and I was walking him back and forth, rocking him to sleep, trying to sing to him. And I kept hearing something at the front door. And I heard the bolt lock unlock. I was like, okay, let me go in the hallway and check out what it is. And we have a motion detector light on our front door, so if anything was to be at the front door, it would detect it and it would turn on. The front light was off. I opened the door anyways and looked outside, turned the light, you know, on, made sure that there's no one out there and nobody was there. I closed the wooden door, locked it, and I walked back to the living room. As soon as I step into the living room, I heard it unlock again. And at this point, I had made sure that the security door on the outside was locked. So there was no way for it to unlock on its own. Again, I went back and locked it again. I went back into the living room and started walking my son back and forth, singing to him, trying to get him to go back to bed. And all of a sudden, he sits up turns around in my arms and looks at the love seat that we have and he goes hi and waves and then bashfully giggles as if somebody is like like playing with him and the spot that he looked at was a spot that my grandma sat at every day since I could remember it's where she sat to watch TV to do Scrabble, to play crosswords. And that is where he looked and said hi. At that moment, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go back upstairs. And as I was passing the hallway that leads to the front door, I heard the door unlock again. I was like, okay, F this, I'm going upstairs. I'm gonna have my husband come downstairs and he's gonna lock the door and I'm just staying upstairs for the rest of the night. It hasn't happened since, 
but it wasn't terrifying. It was more eerie, but I did feel like my grandma's presence was there. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed this, please send in your own accounts. I'll have my email linked in the description. Please send in as much of a descriptive story as you can so I can retell it for you guys next week. Thank you so much and please make sure to subscribe for weekly videos and then weekly ghost stories as well. Thank you so much you guys.